Hey YouTube, I'm back. Um, stay tuned if you want to learn about um, needle phobia and how my shot went and how to try to overcome your needle phobia. Yes, you guys, it's a lot, but I'm trying. All right, let's get started. First of all, let me start off by thanking everybody who came to help me, everybody who prayed for me, all my friends that came over to help take care of me after the shot. I really, really appreciate you and all your thoughts and your prayers. Um, number two, a lot of you guys responded to my video and a lot of you emailed me directly. Some of you were like, I too am needle phobic or, you know, or what, you emailed me directly about what some of your fears were. Some of you, um, uh afraid of blood wounds other people were afraid of uh spiders claustrophobic and so i thought you know what um this would be a really great video for me to do it can help me and it can probably you know while i'm helping me i can try my best to help you so i just want to dive right in this is about needle phobia and how my shot went and um the cortisone shot i did pray i did all my things i had my bible and everything and but it was very painful it definitely was painful you could feel that stuff going in and unfortunately because i am needle phobic i um i clenched up really badly and i had difficulty breathing i just i could not breathe so i was taking little small air you know just really tiny breath i couldn't take a deep breath and so um i ended up like kind of partially passing out a little bit and so it just was a bad experience later that night when i got home something in my spirit just said you know baby you need to research this you need to research it so you can understand it if you understand it you can overcome it with the help of god of course so i just busted out my laptop in the middle of the night and i researched needle phobia and oh my god you guys I had like 10 of the symptoms, like for real, like I'm for real needle phobic. Like I didn't know all these years. I mean, I always knew I was afraid of needles and it's one thing to know you're afraid of needles that, and to think, okay, yeah, you're afraid of them and you just don't do, deal with them. But it's another thing to really understand that like, no, you have a phobia, you have a condition, you have a medically diagnosed condition. It is real and like a whole bunch of people have it. So um, I wanted to go over that with you guys because I wanted you to know that if you are needle phobic, it's not that you're a punk or it's in your mind or you're crazy or you're weak. It's none of that. It is really a medical condition. So some of the stats are um, that needle phobia affects approximately 10 to 23 percent of the population and four to 10 percent of the population has a form of needle phobia that is biological. And 80% of needle phobics have a first degree relative, a parent, child, or sibling um, that is also needle phobic. And the most important thing, you guys, is that why I'm sharing this with you is because if you are needle phobic, I want you to take the steps to get help like I'm going to do because needle phobics die prematurely more than anybody else that has a phobia. And the reason for that is because we're so afraid of needles, we won't even go get the most basic of routine medical treatments like flu shots, any type of regular tests. And so we will put off medical treatment that involve needles until the point to where it's like a life or death situation, you know, just because we're that phobic. Um, I wanted to go over um, what the symptoms are. I'm not going to go into everything because you do need to go to the website and read it for yourself, but there's like seven different forms of needle phobia. Some people are afraid of pricks, other people are afraid of needles, other people are afraid of the injection, other people are afraid of sharp objects. It's just, it all depends. Um, and there's a specific type that causes what they call the vasovulgal, vasovulgal, or vasovagal, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it, reflex. And what that is, is it's an, a reflex of your body. It's a physical reflex that once you get pricked, your body physically responds a certain way. And that's just what it is. Um, 
that's what I have. So for me, my particular symptoms uh, are I, I, I clench up very tightly. I shake um, to the point sometimes people have to hold me down. Um, I have the heart palpitations. I can't breathe deep breaths. I take really, really short breaths. Um, and, you know, I uh, cry because I can't control my body. So my fear is the... My fear is from the fear of the lack of control I experience once I've been pricked with the needle because I, then I can't seem to control my body. And the doctors are like, stop shaking, breathe. They keep telling you to breathe. You know, I'm like passing out and it's just not a good experience. So those are my symptoms. Other people, um, other symptoms, in case you have other symptoms different from mine. Uh, one of my friends is needle phobic as well. Some people um, always faint. They have the blood pressure that spikes up and then it drops and which causes them to faint. Other people have um, convulsions, uh, sweaty palms, of course, hot palpitations, uh, cardiovascular issues, um, so many things. Some people's feet like kind of shake and clap together. It's, it's all different types of things that it can manifest physically. Also, you guys, it's very important for parents. If you have a parent and you're watching this, there's another website which I will post in the description box that goes over how to prevent your children from turning into needle phobics. There is basically different websites say different things, but one of them say from like ages four to seven, another one says like under 10. If your child has a traumatic event with needles, they will be more likely to become needle phobics. And that's kind of what happened to me. I had something happen to me around seven-ish or eight where a nurse basically told me to hold still or be still or not shake or not move because she could break the needle in my arm or she could air in my vein. It could go to my brain and kill me. And after that, I was like literally... I could not get a shot after that. Before I was fine, got my sucker. After that, I was jacked up. And why would she even say something like that? You really, ugh, let's not go there. But that's kind of what happened to me. So imagine as I'm doing my research in the middle of the night, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm realizing I have all these symptoms. I realized I need to have a conversation with my dad because I, in the past when I've talked to my dad, it's like he doesn't like needles. He's like, I don't do them. They have to knock him out. He's like, put me out before you give me a shot. And I had a conversation with him and he was like, oh yeah, my dad was needle phobic for years, you guys. And I, I didn't know. It stemmed from something that happened to him when he was a child. I think a needle broke in his arm or something like that. And and so he was needle phobic. So to know that I was like, oh, I, I I get it now, you know, but he was able to overcome it through a lot of prayer, of course, working with God. And so now he doesn't have as bad of an issue with it. So I'm going to try to do the same thing. And, um, you know, because at the end of the day, God can deliver you from anything, but it's, and you have to at least understand it first, you know, so he can deliver you from it. So I just thought I was like, Scared needles. Um, I didn't know that these were the symptoms of the condition. Some of the things on the website that they say that you can um, do to overcome the, the symptoms, okay? Number one, to take an anti-anxiety or some type of sedative so that that, that can kind of calm you down prior to um, taking the shot. There's also like uh, to numb the area that you're gonna get pricked in. The reason you wanna numb the skin is because a lot of times for us, those of us who have the vasovagal, whatever the reflex, the physical reaction, it doesn't start until your body knows you've been pricked. So once you get pricked, the brain sends a signal and then your body has this reaction. One of the things they talk about to prevent the fainting, to get your shot laying down with your feet elevated. Another thing they talk about is that you can tighten your body all throughout except for the area where you're gonna get the shot. It will help to prevent your blood pressure from dropping and that will help to prevent you from fainting. Anywho, the point is you guys, is I'm sharing this with you because I, I know I'm needle phobic now. I know I'm medically needle phobic now versus just I thought I was afraid of needles. And so it's something that definitely affects millions and millions of people throughout the United States. Like you don't need to feel bad about it. Most important thing you guys is to take the steps is that you don't want to be not going to the doctor. I, that was the aha moment for me. Like I read all the other symptoms and I was like in shock, but I was thinking about all the times I had avoided going to the doctor. 
uh, from skipping school, high school flu shots to almost not going to college, arguing with my mom because I had to get some type of shot. And I was like, I'm just not going to go to college. I'm just not going. Like, that's how adamant and afraid I was of needles. Um, to not getting tested to see if I was diabetic when my legs swelled up. You know, I like three months went by. I refused to get tested because it involved a shot. And my aunts had to like gang up on me and my mom had to make me go. And they were like, it's so important that you get this test and you could lose your foot or something if you don't know if you're diabetic. And I was like, I'd rather lose my foot than get a shot. Literally, I said those words. So even now with the cortisone, I was like, I would rather stay in this boot for two more months if I have to than get a shot. So, you know, you guys, you don't want it to paralyze you and impede you. So now that I understand it, I can now, you know, start to get on the path to overcome it. And with God, he's going to deliver me from it. So I've just got more research to do. Just continue to pray for me. I'm going to continue to pray for everybody else out there that is needle phobic and who's been emailing me. But I just wanted to be courageous and come and tell you guys this so that you can hopefully be inspired to face your fear of needle phobia or anything you have. If you're claustrophobic, if you're afraid of spiders, if you are a germaphobe, you know, whatever it is that, that grips you. Some people are afraid of pain, from people are afraid of love, whatever it is that you research your fear. And if you research it, it will take the power out of it. And then you can lean on God to deliver you from it, okay? So that's the message. Um, my foot, foot update, it does hurt. It will be about a week. I can't really step on my foot without um, feeling pain. So I'm kind of walking on the back of the heel. Uh, so, but you know, just that's what it is. It feels like there's a rock in there on the nerve. But I'm doing the best I can, and my friends are coming and helping me, and um, I'm staying positive. That's all you can do, okay? So, love you guys. Thanks so much for your support. Lots of love. Bye. Mwah.